in addition to the street hooliganism that we see over and over on the streets of America, this movement also has a political ideology that is agitating for a violent political revolution. It's been four weeks since my beating and robbery outside the Justice Center, ironically. There's not been a single arrest. I don't know. I don't want to be cynical about the police investigation, but this has been a pattern of incidents of Antifa violence in the city that never results in arrests or charges. That was conservative journalist Andy Ngo this morning calling for more police action one month now after he was violently attacked while covering an Antifa protest in Portland, Oregon. This is coming as President Trump threatens the anti-fascist group in a tweet saying this, quote, consideration is being given to declaring Antifa, the gutless radical left whack jobs who go around hitting only non-fighters, people over the heads with baseball bats, a major organization of terror, along with MS-13 and others, would make it easier for police to do their job. And Dr. Bill Bennett joins us now, former Secretary of Education, a Fox News contributor and host of Wise Guys on Fox Nation. Good morning to you, Dr. Bennett. So the president says he hey, supports Sandra. labeling Antifa a terror organization Conservatives, we have already seen, have applauded that potential move. Is this the next step in what the president, as you just saw, uh, re referencing as a major organization of terror? Is this, is this how he should proceed? Yeah, maybe. Certainly let the Justice Department look at it. Uh, some of the hallmarks are there. But, you know, these despicable hoodlums uh, need to be arrested, uh, and there are a number of ways under which they can be arrested. My only difficulty, and it's not an objection to this, I think it may be right to call them a terrorist group, is that this doesn't give any more courage or backbone to the local authorities. Problem with the mayor there in Portland, Oregon, and maybe in the police. Uh, look at the police situation in New York, you know, uh, which is, I think, on, on Mayor de Blasio's uh, uh, record and, and hook. So it's good to act at the federal level, but you got to act at the local level, too. These despicable hoodlums should have been arrested on the spot, and there was authority there to do that. You know, Dr. Bennett, Wall Street Journal uh, editorial board penned this piece, Portland's Antifa impunity. No one's been charged in the assault on journalist Andy No, And, of course, that's what we're yeah. talking about right now. And it starts out by saying they think of themselves as a tolerant, progressive city. It ends the piece by saying Portland's got to do something to deter this political violence, or they're just going to get more of it. Are they going to get that message? Yeah. I hope they do, but see, this is where progressivism doesn't know quite what to do with anarchists and anarchy, uh, because they're somewhat sympathetic to arguments that this government is illegitimate and so on. But they better get that message. I spent time in Portland uh, when I was uh, drug czar, and they had the same issues there. People were going up Interstate 5, drug dealers, uh, and uh, happily settling in Portland, Oregon, and they were oblivious to it because they weren't quite sure what the problem was. So you got to get this thing done locally with local law enforcement as well as the action of the feds. It's frustration, I'm sure, on the part uh, of the president uh, with this situation, as we're all frustrated, that has him looking at the terrorist angle, and right. well, he should. All right, we will see how the president plans to proceed with that. Meanwhile, I want to ask you about the so-called squad and the president's attack on these four Democratic yeah. Yeah. congresswomen. The New York Times uh, has a piece uh, published over the weekend, Pelosi, Clinton, Obama, now the squad is the new target for the right. In that, it writes, while it's not unusual for partisans to move on to fresh targets, these four women have less power, fewer achievements, and lower national profiles than past Republican targets like Mr. Obama or Mr. Clinton. None yeah, are seeking yeah, the presidency yeah. or even a leadership yeah. position in the House. So why is the president spending so much time targeting these four freshman members of Congress? Well, I, I agree with the president, but I sort of agree with the New York Times as well. Uh, they are uh, an, on the fringe of the Democrat Party. Uh, and uh, they deserve criticism. Uh, they deserve censure for the things they're saying. But, you know, look at the major ca candidates for president on the Democrat side. Uh, look at the positions they're taking, whether you're talking about Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren or uh, Joe Biden, for the most part, Kamala Harris, not for uh, penalizing people to enter the country. Uh, raise your hand if you think that should be taken away. That's not illegal anymore. They raise their hands. How about unlimited benefits for all those people? Yep. Raise their hand again. How about getting rid of private health insurance? Yep. You don't need to go to the fringe in order to make the point about the Democratic Party going off the cliff. A number of liberal journalists have written about this. Even Tom Friedman of the New York Times wrote, a lot of my friends are saying Trump's going to get reelected because our major candidates 
uh, are taking these very crazy left-wing positions. Mm -hmm. So all, all I'm saying is, in addition to talking about the squad, talk about the people who are likely to be running against you, uh, yeah. Mr. President, because they hold some of the same wacky positions. It's very interesting. Before I let you go, Baltimore and this growing feud, Elijah Cummings, the president, yeah. doubling down on more tweets this morning. Where does this go? Yeah, well, it, it, it should go into an investigation of Baltimore. I hope we seize that topic and get there. When I was education secretary, there was a school in Baltimore we found where not one child was reading uh, at grade level. I went up there as drugs are because that was the place they were giving out the clean needles. The place is a mess in many ways, in many neighborhoods. As, again, the New York Times, gee, third time I've quoted the New York <laughs> Times today. That's a record. Uh, uh, saying that, you know, the call the tragedy of Baltimore it was written in May. There are places in Baltimore where it is indeed worse than the third world. Yeah. Bernie Sanders said so. I've been there. I can vouch for that. Yeah. Let's focus attention. Don't lose this conversation. Let's take a close look at Baltimore, at the uh, ownership of these big cities by these liberal mayors, and let's see what they've done. Got it. We'll see where it all goes. Dr. Bill Bennett, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.